let me share my screen and please take some notes if you want to and pay attention let me share my screen Okay, can you see my screen now? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. All right. Thank you for responding. Yeah, uh, let me make a slideshow screen. Yeah. Okay, our topic for today, that's about translation procedures. Procedure means that this, uh, okay, when we uh, first, uh, translate something because uh, we can say that we are an amateur translator. So these steps, yeah, these procedures uh, help us uh, much, yeah, in conducting our translation work. So procedures mean the steps, yeah, uh, the second, the third. Uh, for example, imagine you you have a, a second floor and then uh, you have uh, thirteen. Uh, or 14 stairs yeah yeah uh, to go to the third or to go to the second stair you have to step for the first stair first yeah so procedures mean we cannot uh, do our translation overlapping yeah you have to to uh, do the, the the easiest first yeah so procedures means that the first step the second step and the third step yeah until the end of the stairs yeah so uh, procedures here, uh, we can say uh, procedures is similar to the steps, yeah? Okay. Um, yeah. According to Peter Newmark, there are 18, yeah, translation procedures, yeah? And usually this topic uh, is used, yeah, by uh, your senior to uh, do their research. They are uh, undergraduate thesis. Yeah, uh, they like to uh, take this topic as their uh, research topic because this is. I I can say that this topic is also uh, easy to understand and to take the data uh, later on if you like. Yeah. Okay. Let me. Yeah. This. Uh, no, eight, uh, 18, 15, yeah, techniques, yeah, kalau teknik nanti yang 18. So, there are only 15 translation procedures, yeah, conducted or proposed by Newmark in 1988, uh, yeah, in his book. Yeah, he mentioned that uh, the first translation procedure, yeah, that someone does in uh, the translation work is called transference and the second naturalization. And until the end, yeah, the hardest one, I can say this is the hardest one. This is called notes, yeah. So let me discuss, uh, let us discuss first uh, uh, number one until number eight, yeah. So uh, next week we will continue to the procedure number nine until number 15. So we divide this topic into two meetings. Okay, let's go on to, uh, okay, before we continue to what Peter Newmark proposed about translation procedures, NIDA also in 1964, yeah, he, uh, she mentioned that there are two translation procedures uh, in translation work, but these uh, translation procedures are very general that some, that most translators uh, do not use this procedure because uh, this is a very general procedures that uh, Nadia mentioned before. Yeah, that's why Peter Niemark uh, uh, proposed uh, 15. Yeah, uh, translation procedures that uh, uh, they are very helpful for the translators to do or to conduct their translation work. So that's why I told you just now. That's why. Uh, Many students in translation field take uh, translation procedures proposed by Newmark rather than proposed by by Naida. Okay, 
uh, Nadia mentioned or stated that there are two types of procedures. They are technical procedures and organizational procedures. In these technical procedures means that we are, as the translator, we translate the text and we analyze by ourselves. But for the second procedure, organizational procedures, we translate the a text we analyze first by ourselves and then we give our translation work to other people so that we can take their response, their critiques, their uh, suggestion to uh, make our translation be better. Yeah. Okay. So that's uh, these uh, uh, these procedures are two different uh, things. Yeah. In technical, the translate translator himself do the uh, translation and then she or he analyze it uh, by herself or himself uh, without uh, gaining any uh, critiques, any suggestion, any, uh, uh, we can say, revision from the readers. Yeah, But in the second uh, procedures, uh, it is called organizational procedures. This procedure is, uh, we can say this procedure is uh, better than technical because sometimes we need other people to give us a uh, suggestion to uh, revise or to make our uh, translation uh, more natural, more uh, clearer or clearer to the reader. Yeah. Okay. So we go on to. Uh, the first uh, procedure proposed by Newmark. So the first procedure, the first step in translation work when someone wants to do the translation, she or he uh, transfer first. Yeah, so it is called transfers, transference procedure. In this procedure, yeah, uh, we as the translators usually translate the, the work or the text by loan or borrowing yeah without changing the uh the phones yeah so this is called uh also a pure borrowing yeah because we don't make any changes even if in the sounds or in the spelling yeah okay uh usually uh, we transfer the text yeah based on this uh information yeah Okay, we transfer we transfer the word into target text because they are names of all living and most dead people, and they are geographical and topographical, and they are the names of the periodicals and newspapers. They are the titles of Asian translated literary works. Yeah, the title of plays, the title of films. Yeah. They are names of private companies or institutions. They are names of public. So all, all kinds of names that we can call it blue printed name. So we don't uh, transfer by uh, using other word. Yeah, we just borrow it and we transfer uh, directly without changing the sounds, without changing the spelling into the target text. So that's called transference. Yeah. Okay, the second procedures is naturalization. So the difference between transference and naturalization, this is a little bit uh, different, yeah? Because in transference, we don't change the sounds, we don't change the spelling, but in naturalization, we borrow the word back, yeah? we adapt the pronunciation between the source language into the target text. For example, in English, we we find the word distribution, yeah? And in Bahasa Indonesia, we, trans, we translate into distribusi because in Bahasa Indonesia, we don't have any ending sound ian ian, right? Yeah, so usually we transfer the noun word, yeah, from English, yeah, uh, especially ended by cn, yeah, we transfer it by using c, distribution, distribusi, production, produksi. So that's called naturalization, yeah. We naturalize 
the pronunciation. Yeah, we naturalize the spelling based on the natural pronunciation in target text. All right. Uh, and Peter Nimok uh, mentioned that yeah, naturalization adapts the source language word first. Yeah, we adapt first the source language word. Yeah, but we adapt into the normal pronunciation in target text. Yeah, we call it normal morphology. In if we change the spelling, yeah, and we call it normal pronunciation if uh, it is uh, related to the the sounds yeah and normal morphology if uh, we change the letters yeah okay so that's called naturalization naturalization is also adding new fixes to different terms as i mentioned before for example in bahasa indonesia uh, for example morphology yeah the word morphology is ended by g and y but in bahasa indonesia the word uh, will be morphology. Yeah, we use g, hard g, and e sound. Yeah, so uh, that's called normal morphology. Yeah, the changes in the uh, spelling and also in the letters. All right, we go on to the third. The third procedures proposed by Peter Nimor is called cultural equivalent. We underlined. Yeah, the the word cultural because every nation every country has different culture yeah especially in indonesia we have many tribes and each tribe has uh, a different uh, cultural material yeah if we compare to other tribes yeah batak has its unique culture and java also has its unique culture that is why in translation, we also focus how to translate cultural equivalent word. Yeah. So cultural equivalent process or procedures means that replacing a translation, a translator replaces a cultural word in the source language with a TL1. However, they are not accurate. Why they are not accurate? Because maybe, yeah, they name is uh yeah the name must must be different right but the thing uh may be similar for example in in indonesia we call it mawar yeah in uh english they call it uh rose yeah the name is different but the physical thing is the same yeah. but sometimes the the material or the things is not the same, but they have uh, the same function. Yeah, so we 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 use the word in target language by using uh, the same uh, function of the thing but different name. Yeah. Okay. Uh, for example, uh, the night's watch in English. Yeah, is the name of uh, an organization in english yeah this uh name of the organization yeah translated into garda malam in bahasa indonesia yeah they have the same function yeah to watch yeah to watch the situation at night yeah in english it, it is called the night's watch but in bahasa indonesia we call it garda malam yeah okay this uh, organization it has the same function yeah these two yeah organizations have uh, the same function but they are in different names yeah the second example yeah bacalure bacalurea in french yeah it is translated into bachelor degree in english yeah different names but the same uh image for example in bahasa indonesia we call it sarjana muda right yeah uh, this is a, a a degree in education in academics yeah in france it is called baccalaurea but in english it is called bachelor degree and indonesia we call it sarjana muda at the time but today's yeah 
nowadays we don't call sarjana muna anymore because we have a uh, sarjana uh, sarjana what is it called sarjana S1 kalau S1 uh, vokasi we call it vokasi sarjana vokasi but for uh, other fields we call it uh, according to the name sarjana teknik sarjana sastra yeah uh, based on the the field of the study yeah okay uh, the third example yeah palais bourbon yeah in french this is a french word yeah this is a building guys yeah uh, and in english also this uh, this is has a similar function yeah uh, in english uh, they call it westminster and in bahasa indonesia we call it gedung parlemen yeah the same function a building yeah those three names yeah have similar physical uh has similar physics yeah but they have different names in french the building is called palais bourbon and in english we call it westminster and in bahasa indonesia we call it gedung parlemen and italian they call it Mon montessorio yeah so in this uh, these examples uh, are very uh, useful yeah yeah later on if you want to uh, take this topic uh, translation procedures as your topic or your research uh, undergraduate thesis yeah uh, please be careful yeah be careful to take the data or to analyze the data and if you are still uh, confused please you have to understand first the the examples yeah that is why each, uh, each, uh, how do I say, each procedure, yeah, I, I put some examples so that you, you uh, know better, yeah, to the, to differ between uh, all these fifteen procedures because uh, some of these procedures are similar to each other if you just read the uh, definition, yeah, but after uh, knowing the examples you uh, yeah i i guarantee you have known better uh, the difference between one to another yeah okay uh we go on to number four the fourth translation procedures is called functional equivalent okay functional equivalent require the use of culture neutral word yeah functional equivalent uses more natural cultural words with a new specific term this is the most accurate way to translate cultural words. We differ between functional equivalent and cultural equivalent. The difference is in cultural equivalent, we know that the, the, the physical uh, thing is the same, but they have different name. But here, yeah, the name is different also, but yeah, we have yeah we have specific term yeah we have specific term for example pickpocket in english it's translated into tukang copet yeah okay and uh, second one okay how to uh, pronounce this but calorie yeah in french yeah it is uh, a secondary school and in english uh, okay i'm sorry but, sir but there is no voice sir i can't really? hear nothing dari awal no sir no sir how about the others can you still hear my voice I can hear you. yes sir oh your yes, device sir. already maybe evelyn your device okay no sir i think <laughs> okay sorry maybe it's my connection internet connection yeah can i uh go further can i continue check sound yes sir yes sir yeah okay yeah 
So as I told you just now, cultural equivalent, yeah, replacing cultural word, yeah, they are not accurate. Means that uh, sometimes, yeah, if you differ between cultural equivalent and uh, this uh, functional equivalent, this is uh, related specially uh, to uh, to know the function of the word, yeah. Okay, but in this uh, cultural equivalent means that uh, a physical uh, thing is the same, but the function is uh, the function is the same, yeah. But the name is different. In here, we can say more natural cultural word means that this is not uh, specifically for the names or the names of uh, uh, this is we can say cultural equivalence means that uh, the names of uh, institution the same uh, uh, building yeah the same name of activity but here we can say this is a name of uh, a person right yeah okay uh pickpocket translated into tukang copet bakalore means that uh sarjana muda also yeah this is the academics uh, or the profession yeah same police parliament project dictionary ideology english okay this is a new specific term yeah okay we go on to the fifth descriptive equivalent yeah, this is also easy to understand. Uh, we describe the word, yeah, maybe by the function, maybe the, by the description. Yeah, description means the quality of the, the thing. For example, here, samurai, a word samurai is translated into the Japanese arist aristocracy from the 11th of, to the 19th century. Its function was to provide officers and administrators. So there are too many words yeah, we use to describe a word. In source language, we find here only one word. Yeah, it is samurai in Japan. But in English, we uh, try to describe this uh, thing, yeah, this word samurai, into many words yeah we can call it two sentences here yeah or two clauses yeah the japanese aristocracy from the 11th to the 19th century its function was to provide officers and administrators yeah okay and the second example death year yeah we we translate into kudang kuda perang death year okay here uh we use a uh, descriptive equivalent, yeah, kuda perang, yeah, but we uh, transfer the word that's here, yeah. Ini harusnya nanti it's supposed to uh, couplets, yeah. Tapi nggak apa-apa. Di sini saya hanya menjelaskan that's here itu, yeah. There is an additional information to that here. In bahasa Indonesia, we describe that here by using kuda perang, yeah. So kuda perang, the phrase is uh explaining about the the thing yeah the name of that year so descriptive equivalent means that we describe the word we describe the phrase by using more longer words yeah maybe we describe by using the the qualities we describe about the function yeah so this explanation or this additional information is very useful to the reader to know about the thing yeah okay so that's called descriptive equivalent we go on to the next um procedure yeah number six it is called componential analysis component yeah it means yeah comparing an sl source language word with a tl target uh, language word which has a similar meaning yeah but it is not an obvious one to one equivalent yeah by demonstrating first their comment and then their differing sense of components okay look at 
the example. The first example is good looking. The phrase good looking in English, we transfer, we translate this phrase into tampan in Bahasa Indonesia. Yeah. Means that if we transfer literally good looking, uh, penampakan bagus. Yeah. Means in Bahasa Indonesia, we don't have, we don't say, uh, the appearance by using penampakan ya yeah? but we we use directly by tampan cantik ya yeah? lucu oke okay? so the component or the the component or the same uh, the natural uh, the equivalent meaning of good looking in bahasa Indonesia we uh, have the word ya yeah, that has the same uh, specific term ya yeah? We call it tampan, yeah. The similar meaning of good looking is handsome, yeah, in English, yeah. The the similar meaning of good looking is handsome. That's why we transfer the good looking, uh, the phrase good looking into tampan, yeah. Okay, mule, yeah. Uh, the similar meaning of mule is stubborn or obstinate, yeah. Okay, we transfer into bahasa Indonesia. We call it keras kepala, yeah. Okay, so this is component initial uh, analysis means that we know first the similar meaning in in the same language. For example, good looking. What is the the similar meaning in Bahasa English in English? Yeah, the good looking means handsome. So after finding the similar meaning in uh, the same language, handsome. So we can we can gain the the meaning in target text. Yeah, handsome is has the similar meaning tampan in bahasa Indonesia. For example, if you, the second example, we see here the word mule, we uh, try to find out the similar, the, the synonym first, the synonym of the word mule is stubborn or obstinate, and in bahasa Indonesia, we call it, or we uh, translate into bahasa uh, using keras kepala, okay? So, uh, uh, the specific one for competential analysis first yeah we try to uh, to uh, to find the synonym of the word or the phrase first so that we can be easier to uh, to transfer into target language number seven the procedure number seven is called synonym yeah it is a near t Tar, uh, target equivalent with economy term accuracy. It means, yeah, it means have an equivalent in meaning. This procedure is used when there is no one-to-one -one equivalent. Okay, there is no one-to-one -one equivalent means that, uh, for example, in English, we find the word book, right? And in Bahasa Indonesia, we directly find the translation of book, buku, right? That's called one-to-one -one equivalent. But no one to one equivalent means that in equivalent there is no exact word yeah but we try to find the synonym in bahasa in the target language yeah the six yeah the previous we try to take the synonym in the same language but in number seven in this synonym we try directly to find out the synonym of the word the synonym or the similar meaning in the target text. For example, souvenir in English is translated into oleh-oleh in Indonesia. Yeah, even though sometimes oleh-oleh can be uh, such as fruits, food, breads, chocolate, snacks, and etc. But sometimes souvenirs, if we go to museums or uh, zoo, souvenirs, it's like a, a, yeah, um, not food, yeah, but it's a, 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 a hard things or a hardware, such as uh, it is made of wood, it is made of uh, metal, it's made of uh, uh, clo uh, clothes, it's made of uh, sand, stone, yeah, okay. But oleh oleh in bahasa Indonesia it's, it can be uh, food, yeah. It can be fruits, yeah, and etc. Okay. But the synonym of souvenir in bahasa Indonesia we call oleh oleh.
Okay, persona gentil uh, in English, persona gentil in French, uh, in Bahasa Inggris or in English, we transfer uh, this phrase into kind person. Contempicant, we transfer this phrase into racist story in English. Awkward or fussy, we transfer difficile in uh, French, yeah. Awkward or fussy in English, we transfer into France by using the word facile. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we directly find the synonym or the similar meaning in the target text. Right. The the eighth uh, translation procedure we call it through translation. Yeah. Or sometimes we call it calc or loan. Yeah. It is the literal translation of a common collocation name of organization and components of compounds word yeah compound words it can also be called calc or loan translation yeah for example united nation in english we translate in bahasa indonesia into perserikatan bangsa-bangsa yeah the second example superman yeah uh, in english the word superman yeah in germany we uh, transfer into Ubermans, yeah, Ubermans, yeah, Ubermans is someone who transcends humanity and uh, is different in nature because humans come from apes, yeah. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as I told you just now, uh, yeah, I can I can say that I'm very exhausted for today, so I decide uh, to stop in uh, number eight, yeah, we. I to recap the first translation procedure based on Neymar. One is transference. Yeah. Okay. We can call it also borrowing, pure borrowing. Yeah. And the second procedure is called naturalization. Yeah. We naturalize the, pron the pronunciation and the morphology. The third procedure is called cultural equivalent. Yeah. To replace. Uh, uh, a culture word, yeah, as an SL cultural word into TL cultural word. Yeah, the meaning may be, uh, the meaning may be not, yeah, may not accurate, yeah, but the function is okay. Yeah, different names, but the function is the same. And the fourth is called functional equivalent, yeah. Okay, functional means okay. Uh, let me go first to cultural equivalent. How do I say? Okay, this kind of thing is uh, is uh, there is a, a similar thing between cultural and uh, functional equivalent. Yeah, because they are uh, yeah they these two uh, procedure. They have to find out the equivalence meaning, but in cultural equivalent, uh, from this example, I can uh, tell you that this cultural equivalent is usually for uh, names of organization, names of uh, academic degree, names of buildings. Yeah. So we can say this is uh, cultural material, right? cultural material in bahasa Indonesia peninggalan sejarah yang turun temurun ya but in functional equivalent this is also a name but this is not a material uh, this is not a material uh, cultural material ya the tukang copet in bahasa Indonesia ini bukan uh, budaya but this is only a name right the function ya Pickpocket means that a person who steals uh, someone's uh, stuff. Yeah. So the 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 function means that here functional given means that the activity is the same. Yeah. But the name is different. Yeah. Okay. Fifth is descriptive equivalent. This is I can say this is very easy. Yeah. We we have the uh, root word describe. Yeah. Okay, describe means you have to uh, describe, you have to give explanation by using, uh, uh, by uh, 
telling the qualities the qualities means that the color the the size yeah or you can mention also you can add also the the function of the the thing yeah okay this is called descriptive equivalent and the sixth is called componential an analysis Componential means that we try to find out the synonym in the same language first and then from the the synonym of the word we find we can be easier to find the similar meaning in the target text but in number seven synonym means that from the target language yeah for the source language we try to find uh, exactly the similar meaning the synonym the synonym in the target text yeah without uh, find out the similar or the synonym word in the same language yeah but we uh, directly finding uh, uh, the same yeah synonym in the target text and the last for today uh, the number number eight is called true translation it is called also uh, calc and loan yeah and usually this is uh, this uh, procedure is used for transferring collocations, name of organization, and components of uh, compound words. Yeah? For example, UN yeah? stands for United Nations, but in Bahasa Indonesia we call it PBB, Perserikatan Bangsa Bangsa. Yeah? The, the different name, but the same organization. Yeah? Superman, yeah? different name, but the same uh, quality of person. Yeah? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all for today. Thank you so much for your attention. If you have any question, please ask. Um, I have a question, sir, actually. Yes, please. Okay, so um, about the novel called, the title is, She Speak It, yeah, kalau di Indonesia, in so Indonesian, it's like bercerita, but in English, it's actually, the title the C speaks its name, its name. So is it a functional, cultural, or synonym? I can kinda of confuse. Still mute, sir. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, my nose is running. Okay. Um can you uh mention the name of the novel? Uh, the original name? the original novel from English into Bahasa Indonesia or? Okay, jadi, so in Indonesia it's called Laut Bercerita, but... Okay, so in... the, ori the original work is from Indonesia, right? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, the title is Laut Bercerita. Yep. Okay, and then the translator translated into English? Yeah. Okay, so what what's what the translation? What is the translation of Laut Bercerita? The sea speaks his name. The sea so, speaks his name. Yeah. Okay. Okay, according to the explanation just now, uh, name of uh, novels, name of we we cultural equivalent and what's the sound number four do you still remember cultural equivalent and um functional or functional synonym. not synonymy because uh that is not uh that's a name right yeah we, we i if you ask me yeah, directly i uh i will choose cultural equivalent means that that's a name name of book name of novel and we i can say also that's couplets right nanti kita belajar mengenai couplets in trans uh, in the translation we find two procedures yeah uh, tadi apa penambahannya ada the description tadi apa yang nya ya apa to to speak apa? C speaks to um the C speaks his name his name sir. Yeah, so there is 
uh, an additional information there. His name, right? So there are two procedures there. Yeah. So I can say this is couplets. Tapi kita belum kan? We haven't discussed about couplets, right? Next week. Yeah. Okay. But if we find that uh, the C speaks and then I love bercerita and then uh, the translator the translator or all. Uh, uh, only translate into loud bercerita. Yeah, we can say that's a cultural equivalent or uh, yeah, cultural equivalent because the novel is the same story, right? But different names. Yeah, different names, but the 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 setting, the story must be the same, right? Only different names. Are you following me, Evelyn? Yes, sir. Okay. Any other question? Thank you so much, Evelyn. But yeah, as uh, if just now you you tell me the the you told us that the name has uh, the additional information right to his name. There is an additional phrase, yeah, prepositional phrase to. His name. Ada penambahan di situ, right? So there are two procedures. We we call it a uh, cultural equivalent, and there is uh, also the description there. So we call it couplets. And next week we will uh, go on to the next procedures. Yeah, we will find there is a, a couplet procedure number fourteen. Yeah, before notes. Yeah. Jadi, right. Thank you, sir. Uh, in, uh, in bahasa Indonesia, kalau ada dua, di dalam penerjemahan itu ada dua prosedur yang kita kita gunakan, we call it couplets. Okay? Yes. Any other question? Okay. So uh, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. I do hope you are still, uh, yeah, you have still much spirit to uh, to do your activities. And uh, how many students are here now? Let me check first. Twenty-four. Wow. Tumben. Let me check your presence list. Translation theory. Okay, let me just uh, take a screenshot, guys. Please open your camera for those who can open the camera for uh, us. Okay. I don't want to call your name one by one. Yeah. I'm very exhausted today. All right. Yeah, layer one. Okay. I don't know whether your friends from Philippines are here or no, but I do hope, yeah. I do hope they are here. Okay, one, two, three. Yeah, wait a minute. Is still processing. One, two, three, go. Okay, let me save it first and I sent <clears throat> it also to our WhatsApp group. One more shoot, please. Yeah, give your best smile, ladies and gentlemen. One, two, three. All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, before we end, it our prayer. Can I have a volunteer, please? Can I have a volunteer? Okay. 
Yeah. Okay, let me lead uh, the prayer. I uh, will lead our prayer in Christianity for other who has or who have other beliefs. You can pray uh, as you uh, what believe. Let us pray. <clears throat> Jesus in heaven, thank you so much for giving us a uh, best time to discuss or to study about translation theory. And we can also uh, discuss many things in this uh, meeting with uh, the students uh, in my class. Jesus, we thank you so much for the blessed and for all, uh, for all you give uh, to us since morning until this afternoon. And also we do hope that uh, uh, you give us strength to go on or to run our life daily and you give us also uh, the health yeah, and the strength yeah, to uh, overcome or to uh, yeah, to find solution to our problems. And Father in heaven, please bless our family wherever they are so that we can meet each other in a, a health, healthy condition by Jalan. And thank you for the, yeah, the blessing. Thank you for all you've given to us in our life. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you. Yeah, uh, that's all uh, my explanation for today. If you want to leave our class, yeah, you can leave now. Thank you, guys. Have a nice day. Thank you, Thank you sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir.